All of Fame running back O.J. Simpson passed away on Wednesday after a fight with cancer. His family made the announcement Thursday morning on his X account. And it's a complicated legacy, to say the least. It's undeniable he's one of the all-time great running backs in league history. I remember growing up watching him become the first player to cross the 2,000-yard barrier as a rusher. He was, for a while, one of the all-time leading rushers in the National Football League. A great career. Undeniable. Great pitch man for Hertz and other companies. Great actor. Great broadcaster. But the reality that is O.J. Simpson changed in June of 1994 when his ex-wife and her friend were found dead and he became the prime suspect. And we have the slow speed white Bronco chase. We had the trial of the century that lasted literally four months. And there was an excellent documentary multi-part series from ESPN several years ago. And after watching that and reflecting on everything I remember from those days, and I was fairly early in my career as a lawyer at the time, knowing what I know now, if I had known it then as I understood what was happening and with the benefit of that documentary, look, prosecution blew it. The guy should have been convicted, plain and simple. And that's part of his story. That's part of the life of O.J. Simpson. He was tried for double murder. He was acquitted. He was found responsible through a civil wrongful death lawsuit under a reduced standard of proof. Criminal case, beyond a reasonable doubt. Civil case, preponderance of the evidence. The jury found him responsible for the deaths of Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman. He wasn't convicted. He should have been. And it's okay to think that. It's okay to say that. It doesn't disrespect O.J. Simpson to point out those facts. Frankly, I believe it disrespects his victims to just act like it never happened. Because it did happen. They were killed. And for all the talk about finding the real killer, were we at a point where we all kind of rolled our eyes whenever he would say that? We all knew what happened. And I know there's a percentage out there that strongly believe and will always believe he was innocent. My mother frankly, who watched every day of the trial and who died two weeks after the verdict came back. She believed he was innocent. And I never wanted to argue with her the various points and counterpoints. And there are people who believe he didn't do it. The civil jury found that he did. When you watch the documentary, if you have access to that, I would encourage it. If you haven't seen it, it will allow you to come to your own conclusions as to what really happened there. The point is this. O.J. Simpson was many things. Hall of Fame running back, accomplished broadcaster, surprisingly successful actor. But, but, according to a civil jury, he killed two people. According to the common sense that most of us would apply to the facts and the evidence and the arguments, he somehow avoided going to jail for the rest of his life for the deaths of Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman. And, let's not forget, later... Thanks in large part to the pressure that was placed on him financially due to the $33 million verdict returned in the wrongful death case by Fred Goldman, the father of Ron Goldman. O.J. Simpson ended up involved in an armed robbery in Las Vegas, ended up being convicted of multiple crimes, and he served nine years. He was released on parole in October of 2017 and fully and completely cleared from parole in December of 2021. That's part of his story as well. We can't just ignore facts. We can extend our sympathies to the family because they have lost a loved one. And loved ones tend to find a way to process the various conflicting emotions and feelings that might come from the, the things that happened that you would prefer hadn't happened. But it doesn't change the fact that they happened. So we feel sympathetic to the family of O.J. Simpson. But I think it's also an occasion to feel sympathy again to the family of Nicole Brown and the family of Ron Goldman. They're reminded of it again today. They're reliving the tragedy again today, knowing that the person they firmly believe ended the lives prematurely of their loved ones has now finally seen his life come to an end. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.